All right, so this is just going to be a quick video showing how to open up and disassemble this MSI Katana GF76. All right, so let's go ahead and see inside here. All right, looks like all the stickers are gone. So anyways, we're gonna remove all the screws from the bottom using a JIS-1 screwdriver. Okay, you wanna keep them all in order because they can be different size, shape, and length, so that's very important. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. So we got three at the top here with one knot over here. So I'll just put it like with that pattern, two on the left side and then one on the far right. All right, and then in this row, I'll just put those as three. Okay, so just like that. Oh, actually, that's not even a screw, is it? Yeah, that's not a screw. Okay, so we got three at the very back where the hinges are. <clears throat> and then we got, I guess, two here. This screw is very short, so make sure not to mix that up. Okay, then we'll count this as three. Or I guess we can do two and two, or we can do, yeah. Okay, let's do these two in a second layer, or a second row. This one and this one. And then we got the one over here that I just took out earlier. And then we got this one down here under the factory sticker. Also, there's a little hole here. Um, that's kind of like a battery reset or release. If for some reason the computer's not powering up, you can try using, um, I use like a small paper clip, fold it out, and then just press and hold that button for about 15 seconds to drain any residual power. And then that makes it a lot safer to work on. All right, almost lost that one screw. <laughs> All right, and the last one here. All right, anyways. If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, anyways, we got this little gap here. We're going to try and pull the cover off. I'm going to push with my thumb back here and pull with my fingernails up here. Okay, and you can hear the clips are opening. Okay, just like that. Of course, you can use some plastic pry tools if you can't do this with fingernails. Uh, but I like to use my fingernails and then also now I'm pushing with my thumbnail down and pulling up with these and that helps you can see pop it up. All right. <clears throat> All right, then on the back here you have the little clips here, which are going to be a little bit difficult to get to, but just kind of get in between there and then you can slide a pry tool or again, I just use my fingernails and just work your way back there and you can hear it clicking and separating. Okay, and then make sure to get this last edge right there. And there you can see it's popped out. Make sure you did the same on this side. There we go. All right, and then we should be able to lift this whole bottom cover off. Let's see, did I accidentally click some stuff back in? Maybe on this side, okay. Okay, and then let's go ahead now and lift this up. It's pretty heavy. They have this, I don't know why they have a big metal plate there, but um, yeah. Oh, also, if you can't uh, contribute to the channel um, by sending a contribution, um, it would also help if you could just watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those because that's what the YouTube algorithm likes to see. All right, anyways, we're just taking a quick look in here. I kind of worked with the customer and found out that it's a dead motherboard, so we couldn't really do anything. Um, <clears throat> the motherboard is going to need to be diagnosed, and if it can't be repaired, it's going to need to be replaced. Um, and I can't do that kind of thing. So I have someone I work with that takes a look at that and they're sometimes able to fix those. So we'll see. All right, let's zoom in here <coughs> and just take a look at the components. So we have one fan here with the connector. Um, this kind of just pulls out by, I use my fingernails and just wiggle at the wings of the, oops, wiggle at the wings of the connector. This cable's a little in the way, but I just wiggle and pull and there you go. It pops out like that. All right. I'm not going to pop out everything. I'm just going to kind of show what's going on. You got the GPU here soldered underneath this heatsink and the CPU here soldered underneath this. So it's not replaceable unless you have some very special tools. But then if you have those, you know that you'd either be able to replace it or not. All right, there's two sticks of RAM underneath these flaps here. We're just going to take out one so we can take a look at it. You pull these two tabs to the side and then it pops up and you can go ahead and slide that out. And here you can see this is an 8 gig um, PC4. 3200 AA stick of RAM. 
So yeah, you should be okay with any PC4 3200AA RAM. If you want, you can put two 16 gig sticks. There might be even 32 gig sticks if you want to upgrade to 64 gigs. This is the LCD LVDS connector. If you're going to mess with this, make sure you disconnect the battery first. Open the laptop and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds before doing that. Otherwise, you can fry the backlight, you can fry this cable, and yeah, nothing good can happen. Uh, give me a second, I have another customer here. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So first thing, let's go ahead and disconnect the battery. I'm not really going to work on this because we took it apart and already found it's a motherboard, but basically you grab this cable and just wiggle it side to side as you pull and it should come out just like that. There's an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD right here. All right, one screw. Then you can pull it up kind of like the RAM. There are little thermal pads underneath that make it hard to pull this out. So you're going to slowly, carefully pull this up, okay? Very slowly. Don't try and force it. Just very slowly until it releases from the pads underneath. Okay, the pads might come up with it or they might separate. This one stuck and this one stayed down. But there you go. Again, M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. Then we'll push that back in. I like to push both sides so that way um, if one piece is kind of not too strong, it doesn't rip it out of the board. Okay. And there we go, we'll get that screw in. Again, I'm not gonna be taking this out. Um, then we got the connector here for the two USB ports on this side, all right. And that's interesting, why? One is USB three and one's not, interesting, huh. I don't know why they would do that, but one's USB three and one's not. All right, you got another fan here with the other connector there. <clears throat> DC jack or charge port connector here. Pretty interesting, it's pretty beefy. There's the clip here that you need to push this clip down to be able to pull that out. Okay, and the DC jack charge port goes underneath the hinge over here. So that's kind of a pain if you need to remove the um, charge port, you at least, you either need to remove the entire motherboard or the heat sink. And if you remove the heat sink, you have to redo the thermal paste, so keep that in mind. All right, you got the wireless card here, and you have a two and a half inch SATA hard drive connector here. You can also put a two and a half inch SATA SSD, obviously. Um, you got the speaker connector here, one wire is going there, and then the other wire is running across, all the way across to the other speaker here. And <clears throat> I think that's pretty much it. Oh, the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock batteries here. It's kind of a small one, as you can see and it just plugs in right there. Um, if you're replacing this, take note, the red wire is going up towards the battery and the black wire is going down towards, I guess, the main battery. So the red wire is going up towards the GPU, I guess. All right, and I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out, at least so you can upgrade and kind of know what's inside your computer. And yeah, other than that, we're gonna put this thing back together. Okay, again, hopefully this video helped you guys out if it did. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And again, if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, again, if you can't do that, um, it helps a lot if you can just watch a few of my other videos and then comment and like them as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and click and snap all of this back together. Okay, and then get all the screws back in. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And yeah, you're welcome to stay as I get all these screws back in, but we're good to go. All right, again, I don't know what happened with this computer. He said just one day it just stopped working. So yeah, all right. Let's get all these screws and stuff back in. Make sure again that you put the really tiny screw over here. And, yep.
that screw. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this spike.